Welcome to worship on this Sunday, August 7th. I do hope that all those who view this video recording uh, find it meaningful and helpful, and that those who maybe uh, come across this and find it meaningful in, in their lives maybe can join us in person here at St. Andrew's Lutheran. For now, let us worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us come before the God who calls us in grace, confessing our sins known to us and to God. Merciful God, we confess that we have failed to embrace your promises, looking down at the dust rather than the stars of heaven. Too often we have placed our trust in earthly treasures. We hide our true selves away as if you cannot see them and have failed to trust the witnesses that have gone before us in faith. You have called us to offer food to the hungry, to satisfy the needs of the afflicted, and to honor your holy day. Yet we often go our own ways, serving our own interests, pursuing, pursuing our own affairs. When you call us to humble service, we often exalt ourselves. Heal us on your Sabbath. Forgive us today and lead us into our tomorrows in mercy and love. Amen. In the mercy of God, Jesus Christ was given to reveal the grace and love of God that knows no bounds, which the very grave of death cannot contain. You are forgiven to embrace the promises of life. You are exalted in mercy. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church. Open our hearts to the riches of your grace that we may be ready to receive you wherever you appear. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Let us listen to God's word. A reading from Hebrews. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance, and he set out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he received power of procreation, even though he was too old and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born as many as the stars of heaven and as innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth, for people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus is being quoted. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wire out an unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down and eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, 
If the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. What a hodgepodge of sayings. It makes the preacher wonder if they all were originally together out of the mouth of Jesus. Sure, Luke didn't do, did something strange with what Jesus said, said, you know, maybe. Maybe it was Luke, maybe it was Jesus, but even if Jesus didn't put all these things together just like this, we are left struggling the words as we, as we got them. Asking, what might Jesus or Luke be getting at? I guess we could start at the beginning and work our way back through. We could work our way through. Maybe, maybe in the end you will find, say that my sermon was equally a hodgepodge and choppy. I don't know. I was thinking of using a movie trailer to start this sermon, but then I thought it would be a little too scary for any children who might uh, see it. It's called, and the, and the trailer's making the rounds, uh, and the emails and stuff right now. Uh, so someone sent it to me, and it's called Journey to Hell. And the trailer itself is a spoiler, by the way, so I don't think I'm giving away anything. Apparently, a young man almost drowns, and in this near-death experience, he has a vision of journeying to hell, and there he meets Adolf Hitler and Judas Iscariot, of course. And, of course, he was someone who at one point at least confessed Jesus, but lived a shallow and very materialistic life. And now, of course, when the, uh, the time comes, he finds himself... Um, in hell, and um, the production itself, the movie itself, I have to tell you, is um, not good. It, it looks, as one of my friends said, it looks like a KISS concert uh, is what hell is like. But I guess those who made it really somehow think that someone is going to go see that movie and have, if you um, will excuse the pun, have the you-know-what scared out of them. The movie is meant to produce fear. I guess fear even for believers. Um, oh, this has been done in the church historically before. One of the face, most famous sermons of all time was from uh, Edward, uh, Jonathan Edwards in 1741 that he preached in uh, Connecticut. And this sermon titled, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God, uh, was credited with having a great effect of, of launching the, the first great awakening, a, a revitalization of spirit uh, in, the, in that area of the country especially. And he described uh, uh, Christians like, he described or the devil and his demons uh, like greedy lions that see their prey, expect to have it, but are for the present kept back by God's hand. This act of grace from God has given humans a chance to believe and trust in Christ. Well, according to the movie and to Edwards, not only is God like the thief who comes unexpectedly bringing harsh judgment, according to the movie and to Edwards, we apparently only have this lifetime, this fragile life, a life that could be cut short at any time by, let's say, in the case of the movie, a drowning, to truly confess Jesus is our Lord and Savior. And that seems to certainly limit what God can do, doesn't it? That certainly limits God's uh, potential grace. Instead of fear, maybe we should instead listen to the words of Christ that say in today's gospel, fear not, little flock. For fear not because it is the Father's intention, will, desire to give you the kingdom. To give the kingdom. So fear not. This is what God desires. So we are called to live not in fear, but in trust and faith. A faith that is echoed, is spoken of in Hebrews, a, a faith like that of Abraham, that was willing to journey to a far land. But then, then Jesus does go on in our gospel. And like I said, it feels a little hodgepodge. He goes on to talk about possessions, about money. In the movie, the man who almost drowns is, as I said, very wealthy, and this wealth gets in his way, which maybe isn't too far off from the truth, which is maybe why Jesus and certainly Luke follow up these words about the kingdom of heaven 
with the call to give alms, to give up our treasures. Because here's a little tidbit to remember. From the very beginning of the Gospel of Luke, we have heard about God's great reversal. Blessed are the poor. He has lifted up those of low degree. He eats with the poor and the outcasts and the sinners. The rich man goes away sad. The kingdom of God is a kingdom not of earthly riches, but of the riches of God's grace and mercy. You're going to give up possession, people. The issue is when. So maybe God's call to give up our things is an invitation for us to join the rest of the poor in the kingdom today. All too often we think that when Jesus promises us the kingdom, this is simply some promise of eternal life in the sweet by and by, but that isn't what he says. That's included, oh, I think that. But it's the kingdom of God, the, the new world order of God, that yes, we believe will, will only be complete on the day when he comes again. But in the meantime, in the meantime, we are still asked to experience and to create and to build the kingdom today with God, to join with God in the great reversal. And if our possessions are what prevent us from doing so, well then, maybe we do need to sell a whole bunch of them. Maybe we need to sell everything. Maybe that wouldn't be wise or practical in the long run, but that doesn't mean it isn't exactly what Jesus says. Again, he goes on. He says, be dressed for action, he says. Be ready, be alert. Rather than being dressed for the action that God desires in God's great flipped upside down kingdom, action of justice and mercy, all too often we are dressed with our pockets weighed down with things, with possessions. We want to swim in baptismal waters with all those coins pulling us to the bottom. So Jesus talks about the master coming, unexpectedly looking to find his servants ready to greet him. Yet, yet, then did you notice something odd? It says what will happen when the master finds his servants at the door, awake and ready. Jesus says that then the master will wait on the servants. The tables are turned. Even here is the new world order. He comes not to be served, but to serve. He comes even like a thief in the night to save and bring us closer to God in his life and the next. Yet that image of the thief is a little odd, isn't it? A thief? I guess it depends on what the thief steals, doesn't it? There is a thief who steals and destroys, and there is the thief that saves. In the words of Alice, Alice L-A-L-Y-C-E, Mackenzie, God's holy thief is a burglar who returns to steal our false priorities and overturn our unjust structures. When he breaks into our house, we will never be the same, end quote. Maybe this thief comes to steal whatever it is that keeps us from that closer relationship with God this very day, from being more fully engaged in God's kingdom now, to pull us away from those things we cling to emotionally and, yes, even spiritually. Look, if you remember nothing else in this hodgepodge sermon, remember the very start. Jesus says, fear not. It is God's desire to give you the goodness, the mercy, the kingdom of God. And if God comes like a thief in the night, if God comes the master returning unexpectedly, he comes to serve. Don't be afraid, like some movie may ask you to be. There are plenty of other things we can fear. And yes, ironically, sometimes our material possessions do help address some fears. Fear of the unexpected bill or insurance that keeps, helps our fear of loss. But there are so many other fears. We do fear losing friends and loved ones. We, we fear losing truly important things in our lives, like our health. We fear fear failure. We might fear not being loved. 
Fear is a very, very real emotion in our lives. And I don't think Jesus is saying, how dare you fear? I think rather he is calling simply for us to not be directed by fear in our lives. You don't even need to fear the thief if the thief is God. Maybe he comes to steal our treasures because God wants our hearts. Because where our treasure is, there will our hearts be also. And if he has stolen and holds onto our treasures, surely the promise is he holds our hearts as well. Thanks be to God. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. O oh God, let your loving kindness be upon your church. Fill all who proclaim the gospel with your spirit. We equip your flock to speak your word of promise and hope in the midst of fear and uncertainty. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your creation. Help us respond in passion for all you have given us and fashion us to be good stewards of your bounty. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your world. Be our helper and our shield in places torn by strife and violence, especially the Ukraine. Raise up courageous leaders to govern with compassion and justice. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your children. Look upon all who wait for your steadfast love. Console those who grieve and embrace those who cry out to you, especially those devastated by the floods in Kentucky. Help us to trust your promise and not be afraid. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon this community. Fashion our hearts to strive for the way of peace. Strengthen the ministries of this congregation and all who care for those in need in their daily lives in ways we may not know or see. Merciful God, receive our prayer. With thanksgiving, we remember all who have died in faith and now rest in you. As they place their hope in you, so strengthen us to trust in your promise of new life. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you this day and forever. Amen. Let us go in peace. Let us go without fear. And let us serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.